What's up, StarCraft fans? They were doing the tier list for One for All and Temple of the Past, so Brian, let's hear the mutation. Temple of the Past is the map where we have to protect a temple in the center of the map from waves of enemy units. If the temple survives until the end of the game, we win. If the enemies destroy the temple, we lose. Enemies sometimes transform into stronger units, and hybrids take max 10 damage per shot when there are other dudes around them, and they also buff said dudes. Alright, so Tutu and Stick Spinner are in the call bus today. Take one, guys. First attempt. How, how are you doing today? Great. Yeah. Alright, so uh, Tutu, how are you going to rank commanders today? So for this mutation, um, commanders who have good AoE will be uh, pretty good here because you want to take out all the regular enemies during hybrid waves. And if something goes wrong because of transmutation, commanders who can take a lot of punishment will also do pretty well here. Okay. Anything to add, Stickspender? Yeah, the biggest thing here is trying to not let things get out of hand. Uh, you don't want to ever allow Amon to be shooting at uh, squishy small units and being able to actually kill them, or else things will spiral out of control quickly. And if things don't spiral out of control quickly, it's typically a pretty easy mutation, to be honest. Um, and then the other thing that will help is having a big top bar that can actually save you if things do get out of hand, like a uh, time stop or solo bombardment, but not a big red button because that's just going to get stopped by hardened will. Or 41 nukes. Yeah, 41 nukes should do fine, yeah. All right, so let's begin. Abathur, where do we have him? So for Abathur, um, being able to spawn camp the, the spawn points is really good. Even if they have air units, you kill most of the ground units. So uh, if and if you're on really on top of things, you'll kill all the ground units. You have brutalists or leviathans sitting there to kill the air units, and then finish off the hybrids. And you have vipers. The bad part is that he takes some time to get started. Yeah. But if you um, are not fighting Zerg, you can um, spawn camp the first two, maybe even three waves, the first hybrid wave possibly. So, and you can get a Brutalisk or two before the first hybrid wave. So I put him in B. Okay, how about you, Stickspender? Yeah, I would think that uh, uh, Ultimate Evolutions would make the early game work really well for Abathur, to be honest. So, yeah. Um, I think this mutation would really see a lot of Abathur really just proving his entire power curve really strong early game shaky mid game really strong late game and yeah you do have to worry about the fact that you don't get to farm biomass early as easily with the whole problem but yeah i think abyssal should be b tier is probably pretty safe he could arguably be a tier but i think he's safe in b what do you guys think about the hybrid farming strategy quote unquote strategy oh boy what's the point of that um, so much biomass. Yes. <laughs> the point of that oh. is, if you have an ally who does all the work, you can uh, have a little bit of fun. <laughs> yeah, if you have an ally who does all the work. <laughs> Once you reach a critical mass of swarm hosts, it's fine. I guess that, that, I guess that makes sense. Anyway. It has no right working, but Abathur's kind of <laughs> ridiculous once he gets enough swarm hosts. Anyways, yes. Yeah, unanimous B. There it is. Uh, without prestige, still be right. Nothing about that is yeah. prestige sensitive. Alarak, where do we have him? So Alarak does have the problem of, as I said, you have units that uh, can get murdered, and it's really bad if they do. Transmutation transmutates enemies' uh, amount based on the supply cost of the unit killed. So the fact that you have all these supplicants lying around that are too supply, but also, you know, easy to get slaughtered, despite how durable they are, they just kind of sit in front and stand there. Um, Their whole purpose is to die. <laughs> yes. So, uh, obviously, you obviously want to have all the enemies shooting at Alarak himself, because if Alarak eats the unit, that doesn't transmutate anything. If the enemies shoot the unit and it dies, that does transmutate something. So, you can see where the problem is. Um, it, Alarak can steamroll this mutation very hard, uh, because he has a lot of damage, and he can just let Alarak take all the damage. Yes. The problem is uh, micro, and also um, 
carrying multiple pronged attacks uh, when your ally is not able to handle their own uh, part of the weight will be a pain in the butt for Alarak because he's just just he's just gonna have a hard time getting between places fast enough when he's like needs to keep everything information i think uh you can split ascendance but that's going to leave you very thin until late game Hmm. basically he's got all the tools it's just kind of (laughs) hard how about you oh wait letter oh uh, b okay how about you uh tutu um he has great AOE, so uh, even with like if you're kiting, the mothership helps, like because it attacks while moving. Um, Ascendant balls, a great AOE, and if when you're left with hybrids, you mind blast them, like when there's nothing else. Um, it does. Uh, it is kind of challenging to um, control all that though, um, but he because you can like have a Alarak in his own control group, you just send him to the front and then he'll take all the damage. Um, you just keep that in mind and then you won't lose much stuff, I guess. Um, B seems fine. I put him in A, but I think B is okay too because of the like micro requirement. Yeah. Again, that sounds very not prestige sensitive. Uh, does it matter what prestige you're using? Mm. Three really. is better, but I don't think it matters that much. All right. Another unanimous B. Uh, Arcturus, where do we have him? Um, Manx is... Um, he has bunkers, and he has explodey guys, and he has ESOs. So but, you mean... Um, if, um, if your ESOs don't hit them, or if you miss time your contaminate strikes or something, <laughs> it's just um <laughs> In yeah, you you're gonna have like a lot of you're gonna have to kill the you're gonna want probably want to send in suicidal troopers to blow up the stuff. And hopefully that kills all of the, the dudes around the, Hybrid. the hybrids so that the hybrids are left alone. Uh, I I think the troopers don't care about hardened will, right? Not that much. If you don't have I, I don't guns remember. on them, probably not. I think with also if they have guns, they if you do more. have guns, they care a little bit. A little bit, but not much. Okay, but yeah. So uh, he's a, also like if you have if you're fighting like immortals or something, your your bunkers might get wrecked, but because uh, they have inspiration with the hybrids. You might want to kill your own dudes to set, uh, like target your own dudes so that they send the bombs off without triggering transmutation. I put him in B. Oh, wow. He's, right. Okay, how about you, uh, Stixbender? So basically, the deal with Mengsk is you don't want the bunkers to die ever. Uh, and as long as the bunkers don't die, you just walk over everything. If you uh, yeah, so there are harder comps which will force you to have slightly more bunker, but the only time you'll ever get enough stuff to actually kill bunker is when you're late enough in the game that you should have ESOs out. So you should be able to contaminate strike slash just casual bombard depending on if it's air or ground, and it should stop being a problem. So basically, uh. <sighs> It's not too hard with Mengsk unless you are too slow at getting your bunkers built, in which case you're just kind of toast. P3 can give you a little bit of wiggle room for that, where if your bunker dies, then the troopers inside of it blow up and that will uh, vaporize the offenders. (laughs) And also, if you don't have bunkers in position for something, you can throw a bunch of troopers over there and explode in Amon's face and hope that'll do it but for the most part yeah it's basically just you set up bunkers at the tops of each ramp you set up esos and you just never let amon hit a unit only a building all right so where does this happen i would say he's a tier because seriously unless your bunkers die you are amon doesn't do anything (laughs) 
he uh, cannot do anything. What do you say about that, Tutu? I don't know which comps. Like, well, there are certain comps where he'll steamroll, and then the ones uh, that hit bunkers hard. Re- Re- disruptor, reapers. Yeah. Well, the thing is, if you get Reaver Disruptor, you know it's a ground comp, so you can more uh, quickly just go and spam uh, ESOs and just like have like 15 ESOs and one bunker at each ramp or something because it's a ground comp. So what do, you, what do your bunker have to do? Kill a scout or two. That's it. Um, no, it's air comps are harder. Uh, I intentionally actually went and tried this against comps I expected to be hard. And yeah, air comps are the actually hard comps here. Oh. And even then... Yeah, it's like at worst, it's like oh, I need an extra, uh, you know, two bunkers, which just means that basically you have to be more on top of getting your bunkers built because you need more of them built before the wave hits you. But it still works basically the same procedure. Um, the only difficulty really is that if you're at the really hard comp and you're by yourself, literally no ally, then it's kind of tight to get all the bunkers down. But if you get all the bunkers down, you've just won from there. It's just get all the bunkers down. <laughs> it's just a matter um, of taking out the thrashers. I guess uh, top bars? Or splitters? Yes, those oh, can actually yeah. reach. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and if they can't, just make like a Pride of August grad later in the game or something. All right. So, uh, is that. An, is, does that convince you to do? Ace. All right, I guess. Okay, not complaining. I think I also all urge you to have an A. Um, Artanis, where do we have him? So Artanis is um, not great against transmutation. He's kind of not exactly the most kill it before it looks at you oriented. He has one thing really going for him, and that's that shield overcharge nullifies oh. transmutation because. Amon doesn't transmutate from damaging you while shield overcharges up. Uh, I thought Archon dudes, but yeah, that works too. Yeah, shield overcharge is really good. Uh, Archon dudes are pretty good too. They can also delete a lot of stuff, but shield overcharge is amazing. Solo bombardment uh, does care about hardened will, but it, you know, it cares about it, but it can still actually de- take good chunks out of hybrid despite it, instead of just doing nothing to hybrid. So you have a good. Uh, wave deletion alt for giant waves as well um so basically artanis should be able to do decently on the power of his top bar it's just that his units aren't exactly the best suited for this uh against an easy comp you should be able to do okay but you're not going to be easily soloing this or hyper carrying. You're just going to be able to easily like pull your weight and then some. So where does that put him? Yeah, probably like C or D. How about you, Tutu? Um, if you're not P3, he's gonna go down a notch because the unbound fanatics are so good. That's what uh, I thought. And shield overcharge spam. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's not. You're not. You're not gonna want to fight like zealots. You don't <laughs> want to use too many. I mean, you're gonna use some, but you don't want to use too many because they're gonna Trash trigger. The, yeah, yeah. Well, you want to use some against some comps. Against other comps, you don't even want to make any zealots at all. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you also you have to be like on top of your top bar usage. And uh, you pretty much rely on that to not suffer from transmutation. Um, I put him in D. You, you're not useless, but I also had him. Also had him in D. Um, I, I guess one more thing to note here. I guess regardless of your commander, y- you want to snipe dude lords and carriers because those Instantly. make yeah. As soon as you see them, right click everything you have in the location at them. Because they produce units which all transmutate, so you've been warned. Uh, without prestige, he goes down a tier. Um, high C to low yeah, D. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, for me, it's without prestige. He goes down from C to D. But uh, if we're already putting him in D, it's like he's not E. 
Yeah, but I don't like, think Z. Without P3, life is a lot harder. Although, to be fair, Guardian Shell does kind of help, since remember, they transitate when they manage to land the killing blow, and we stubbornly refuse to let that happen for this wave. It's just the, next wave uh, when you die horribly because all your units have one hit point. The kill guarantees the transmutate, but they can still transmutate even when they don't kill. It's just a lower yes. probability. So, uh, well, uh, it, the bigger thing is that they can only transmutate one level from a non-kill, and they transmutate equal to supply level from a kill. That makes sense. So, uh, do we have a C or D? I'm, I'm personally feeling D, and uh, just because of the firepower thing, uh, I'm trying to think of are dragoons like, good enough to get him in C? No. Like if there's a if there's a siege unit giving the dudes hardened will, it's so hard to get rid of it without suffering losses. Mm. Like a reaver or a long like a tank or something. <laughs> or yeah, I guess that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, you're comp you're comp dependent at best. Although comp dependent has always left people in, are often not always, but often left people in C tier due to comp dependence. But he also isn't that great even against yeah. the comps he's good against. He wasn't great um, to begin with. Also, I would say that the ideal is not something that you can beat with Dragoons as much as something that you can beat with Storm, probably. But, yeah. Eh. Like, if you get something that's that's easy for Dragoons, like, if you have to face Siege units, that's already a pain for Dragoons either way. Even with no mutators, Reavers and Siege tanks are a pain for Dragoons. Uh if you're facing like Sky Toss Tempest on the flip side, if you just mass Dragoon, it should go fine. <laughs> yeah, because Tempests are only one tier away from hybrids anyway. Or hit two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I think they're like one tier away from like the smallest the small. hybrid, but Me? then they turn into a Loki on you or something, and that's annoying, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Loki's are annoying. I actually think he's D. Because yeah, he he's not that great to begin with, and uh, I think y'all are very much underestimating the sheer impact that shield overcharge has. But okay, so uh, are are we okay with D? I, I, we can move I'm him up. To, if uh, I'm not going to uh, fight that hard for C on Artanis, even if yeah, I know that Artanis has often proved to uh, make transmutation mutations. A lot easier than everyone expected because shield overcharge is in fact really, really good as hard counter transmutation. Hmm, I should try that then. Okay, maybe we can promote him later, but for now let's have him D. Uh speak of D, Dahaka, where do we have him? Dahaka, um pack leaders have a lot of life. And they can um they have good AoE as well. And then you probably want to use Mutalisks, not Creeper Hosts, um, or Tyrannosaurs, either one. Um, yeah, so uh, he does pretty well, but he doesn't like make it, it's not super easy, so I put him in A. Okay, uh, how about you, Sixpender? Well, seems fair enough. Um, I'm a little surprised that we're not seeing a Tahaka S nomination here, but yeah. Uh, he's, without he's, he's just he's just kind of really good. Without prestige, still A, right? Yeah. All right, there you go. Yeah, there's A. I was thinking about putting him in S, but like, yeah, he, he can still, you know, he's not fail proof. Uh, Phoenix, where do we have him? Phoenix. Um. So Phoenix is gonna have some slight problems. And by that I mean, if you go carriers, transmutation is a problem. If you don't go carriers and you go champions, hardened will is a serious problem. So you get caught between two like hard counters to each one of your uh, good best options here. So it's like, hmm, well, this is gonna suck. You're basically going to be probably wanting to go P2 and just be kind of fine until you get a mixture of hybrid and non-hybrid, at which point yeah. you can kill them with enough kill analysis because at worst case scenario, eventually they all turn into hybrid and then you kill them all. Uh, the problem will just be the fact that um, that'll take a long time and Amon's just going to send more waves on other fronts and the amount of time it takes you to kill stuff with hard and well getting in the way. Yep. So... Um, 
yeah, I, I expect this is going to be extremely painful for Phoenix. Uh, and I would probably say he's like C tier. Okay. D tier. Um, like it's going to be painful. Tutu, where do you have him? Mm, I don't think he was that bad. Um, so it, you can just right click like the units behind the hybrids. Mm-hmm. So like let let the hybrids fight, and then you're you're focusing down all the other other units first, and then um, whatever's left, you'll you'll fight the hybrids after you focus down all the other stuff. You can't use Clolarian, Clo- although I did. I just turned off this interceptor thing, so <laughs> uh, I turned off the interceptors. Mm-hmm. But so just use the laser. Yeah, I used one Clo one Clolarian, and the rest was just I just for the body. Um, <laughs> That's fun. But yeah. Uh, air comps are very annoying. Mm. And ground comps are decent. I think what you should do is you use either the Zealot or the Dragoon suit and you AoE as many things as possible. Then you send in the champions. <laughs> I uh, thought I, I put them in B. B? Yeah, hmm. I think it's really high. Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm thinking C. Like, yeah, B will work, but the comp dependence. If you get air, it's gonna be really annoying, as you said. So, wouldn't that It'll turn into brown? But they're hybrid. <laughs> what if you get if you get a carrier comp or a broodlord comp, you're dead. <laughs> that's not, yeah, that sounds the ones with broodlords and carriers are like at the end. Mm, true. True. Hmm. By that time, you can just spam. You can just spam um, cyber cores. That's true. That being oh, said, I still kind of don't feel comfortable putting it in the same level as a lot of Agatha. Yeah, that's Both my that's my primary thing. options to me than Phoenix. Like a whole tier above is why I'm thinking. Yeah, maybe Phoenix goes in C instead. Uh. Okay. All right. <laughs> I can, yeah. I I don't have a strong opinion, but I don't. I'm not gonna fight for it. B. <laughs> All right. Let's I, have. I don't think he's. Let's have Phoenix and C. Han and Horner. Where do we have him? Han and Horner is terrible. Um, <laughs> if, wow! <laughs> Who could have seen that coming? Um, but surprisingly, uh, I I failed like ten times with P two, and then I used one time P one, and I passed, and I beat it in one shot with P one, um, making the carrier galleons. <laughs> like you're not, you probably shouldn't, but like I made them anyways because it's like the co- enemy comp was a weak one, of course. But <laughs> um, I think it's in the magmine and magmine usage. And strike fighters will be the main weapons. And if you're not good with those, if you're wasteful, then it's going to be difficult. You probably want. I used Reapers because they do a lot of damage, but uh, you can try BCs, P2 BCs. Um, I put Han Horner in E because if you're not good with your top bars, if you waste, if you're wasteful, you're going to do a lot of nothing. All right, that sounds fair. How about you, Sixpender? The only thing I'll add is that if you are against Terran, they send virtually no detection, so you can trade out the Reapers for Widow Mines, and that might do better, although that'll make Hybrid a lot more annoying. Other than that, yeah, they're, they're, they can deal with easy comps. That's about all I, they got. <laughs> I tried I tried the the P2 Widow Mine Wraith against Terran, and I got, and then I get to 18 minutes, they kill everything. <laughs> I can't yeah. kill the detectors. Rips. Yeah. Uh, you would basically, you would not go Widow Mine Wraith, I don't think. You would just like use Widow Mines in place of the Reapers and then do Strike Fighter or Mag Mine strats. I would mm. think. With the five Assault Galleons. Yeah, it's just that the Widow Mines uh, can eat Marines for breakfast and you just abuse the heck out of that. <laughs> All right, so uh, what do you have of Sixbender? Uh, oh, yeah, also EA said. Oh, all right, there it is. Unanimous. Yeah, no, they're, they're bad. <laughs> but there are two of them. <laughs> I know, it makes them twice as bad. <laughs> oh, Carax, where do you have them? Uh, 
really good. Amon doesn't get to transmutate if he doesn't even get to shoot because he gets vaporized by a solar lance before he even gets to do anything. That makes a lot uh, of sense. Also, solar lance and purifier beam. Uh, the solar lance burn ground fire thing and purifier beam both have very high damage tick rate, so they are able to get somewhat past hardened will to make sure even hybrid have a bad day against them. And nice. once you've just used all that splash damage to vaporize everything that isn't a hybrid, just instantly turn it to ash. Um, all that's left is hybrid who walk up to a bunch of monoliths and get instantly zapped very angrily. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think Karak is probably S tier. He's just going to walk over this, I would think. Do you agree to two? Uh, yeah. All right. Um, Solar Lance is really good. And Purifier Beam. With P3, Purifier Beam, you have it like very very frequently very frequently so uh yeah a uh, solar right here once again for carax awesome yay uh without prestige still s uh probably you still have solar lens still have solar lens it's that defense free, so that's sad but okay uh kerrigan where do we have him kerrigan is good she has good aoe but then like it, she's putting herself at like huge she's uh putting herself in a lot of danger True. against hybrid waves of course you can stun first you stun first and then you try to kill as much as you can um then you send in ultralists so if if all goes well you're left uh by the time they're unstunned or uh the the hybrids are slow so you just um try to focus down all the the regular enemies before they have a chance to fight and then the ultralists will fight the hybrids um, if something goes wrong, though, you're just and if Kerrigan dies, it's like you're you're dead. Mm -hmm. So I put her in B. Hmm. Mm. B all the way up there. Really? Oh, what, what do you think, Spender? What do you think? She's that bad that uh. That it's a lot of work Kerrigan's going to have to do to manage to clear all the waves without running into problems of, like, yeah, you can't even, you can't, you, you can use worms to tank, but not really, because, like, transmutation, uh, you have to worry about so many, like, you basically have to destroy massive waves of small units, because the waves are pretty big on this map, while yeah. being angrily bonked by hybrid just with kerrigan hero unit which i feel like is gonna be really tough uh yeah and if you get an air comp you just kind of lose yeah how shoot up that's kerrigan's job me too i, yeah, I feel that... like you're i feel like you're phoenix here at best to be honest hmm so yeah the, the thing the c, c c tier is basically how shoot up tier <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, I personally, I, I like, like with Artanis, me, me rathering Artanis over Phoenix was like, yeah, that's because I'm better at Artanis. But this one, it's like, I'd say it's like, I can't see Kerrigan keeping up with Artanis actually. And we put Artanis down at D, but oh. mm, I actually had Kerrigan in C because yeah, Kerrigan can do well on her own, but I was thinking. You can just ignore the hybrid because they don't have a lot of damage against buildings. So you kill the regular waves and then just let the. Uh, uh, in the later part, at least, like 18 minutes plus. You let the hybrids uh, just keep eat whacking worms. the. Yeah, eat worms. And you have more worms than Amon has hybrids. So that'll, that might work, I'm thinking. Of course, I haven't really done that. <laughs> I mean, an entire hybrid does have only, like, what, the DPS of an immortal? So. Mm. Yes, it's the DPS of an immortal. It's an entire hybrid turns into one immortal of DPS. It's like, they're not exactly worm killers. Yeah. Uh. I was thinking, yeah, for that for the late game. Just keep spamming worms. Kill the regular waves. The, the, the regular waves have more DPS than the hybrids themselves. And then let the, yeah... Let the, the hard worms. part kill the regular waves. Uh, but yeah, I guess I could say Kerrigan's C tier is fine. Uh, is C tier okay to two? She 
doesn't struggle against regular waves though. Like normally you do the same thing because the regular waves don't come with inspiration and hardened will. Hmm. Hybrid waves here are 6, 10, 13, 6, 10, 12, 6, 10, 12, 30, 8, uh, 14. Well, it depends on which pattern. Yeah. 18, yeah. Which pattern did you fight? Did 15, you fight 6 type of 6 thrasher or 5 uh, thrasher? The no, uh, drop pods, I think. The 5 thrasher, yeah. That I expect would be easier for Kerrigan here, probably. What if you get the air hybrid for, uh, for Kerrigan? Air hybrids are turned into a, a turn harmlessly transmutate yeah. into a behemoth or dominator. It's fine. Harmlessly, <laughs> the, uh, relatively I've been, harmlessly. My character has been Compared hit by the transmutation. <laughs> my character has been hit by many a, a hybrid Yamato. So, <laughs> eh, um, she's got shields almost equal to the hybrid Yamato damage. It's all right. Uh, <laughs> so what? Uh, do we say? Mm, uh, do we say B or C? I would say I would I would be pretty strongly insistent on putting her down to C. Hmm. What do you think, Tutu? C is okay. Hmm. If you use non P two, it's gonna be harder. But your immo immobilization wave can be should be stronger. So then the hybrid waves you have less stuff to kill Mo most things have less than 200 hp you have like scouts and stuff that have a little bit more you just poke them while they're stunned oh so we're talking we're talking uh immobilization wave mastery here yes okay but like if you're not using immobilization if you're not if you're using p2 you're gonna use uh immobilization wave as a stun and then you just use the lightning to finish them off kill off the other yeah dude. yeah i think yeah. I think the immobilization wave comes on frequently enough that you can have it for every single late game wave. Except the quadruple drop one. But that one you can if easily you, take care of with Zap. If you are against the six Thrasher spawn, you're gonna have trouble with the uh giant middle wave that happens. Yeah, the twenty minute one. Yeah. Uh, that's gonna be a problem for Kerrigan. That is a problem. But she'll have another immobilization wave by then. Yeah. You use Slap one at enough. 18, and then you, by the time they walk to your base, it's 20, 30 ish, and then you have. Then you'll be fine. Yeah. Mm. So, is C fine? Or. Yeah. You, you can deal with it, but I don't know. It seems a little risky. Yeah. Okay, I see the risky part because if, as I said, as I said earlier, if, if Kerrigan, Kerrigan dies, you die. Real, it's over. Yeah, that's why I'm saying C. Okay. All right, there it is. <laughs> Kerrigan is spelled with a C, guys. <laughs> um, Nova, where do we have him? Nova. Uh, so Nova has. A little bit of trouble with the small dudes, but Griffin Airstrike and Nova's hero should be able to clear them. And then once you get it down to just hybrid, the fat liberator... guys. <laughs> if we're calling the small dudes the small dudes, we gotta call the hybrids the fat guys. <laughs> oh, is that how it is? To to introduce uh, um... the term fat guys, we, we gotta we gotta stick to our terminology, guys. All right. Uh, uh, so <laughs> yes, you have a bit of trouble killing the small dudes. Once the small dudes are dead, the fat guys get liberated of life. <laughs> <laughs> um, for killing the small dudes, it's going to be Nova in shotgun mode, Griffin airstrike, and Ravens all coming together to murder everything. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it's just going to be Liberators saying, cease puny hybrid. That makes a lot of sense to me. Better? Um, B, I would guess. B? Really? B? Maybe A? I was thinking A, but uh, Tutu, what do you think? Be okay, okay. With uh, P, if you're doing the usual P1 Liberator Raven, you just dump your turrets in the front and then Liberators to uh, put circles around the turrets and then airstrike the waves. So you kill pretty much everything. And the 
The good thing about this map is that it's very easy to line up the shots. Yeah. <laughs> so you kill pretty much everything except like a battle cruiser, and um, you just Raven Seeker missile those. Like, yeah. Let I it. Put her in a. Let it. Let it kill Nessie V and transmute it into a, an, a into a hybrid and then die. <laughs> Okay. I, put her in a. Uh, I think we ha I think we all have her in A. A is alright. All right, uh, right six bender? Yeah. Yeah, all A right. is fine. There it is. Um without prestige. Still A? Still do the same thing, except you have fewer liberators. Yeah, more siege tanks, Goliaths, liberators. Yeah, yeah, still A. Um Rainer, where do we have him? Oh man. S tier. Rainer. <laughs> Rainer is Super bad. Like, <laughs> S for super bad. Good. You can't, you can't even spawn camp because like you can kill all the ground units and then what about the air units and then the hybrid will still have hardened will. But you soloed it. Ground unit with full temple health. I did. Yeah, yeah, but just um, you need that one out of nineteen, <laughs> that one comp. And then one out and of two you for do everything perfectly. One out of two for the and hybrid so, spawn. <laughs> um, in our run, I went P three battle cruisers, and that requires an ally to like carry the early game. Pretty much, like I did nothing early on, so I could power up. And because of that, you're like doing nothing for the early game. I think he belongs in F. <laughs> well, what what was it like having being carried by a Stukov on transmutation? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, what do yeah. you think, Six Bender? Uh, yeah, I think Jimmy and F tier can be understandable. He actively makes it worse by existing, right? You try to spawn cam, you he fail. Could go Damn, AFK. Everywhere. <laughs> he, he could he could help by going AFK. He could uh, help by leaving the game, here. so the ally gets yeah. mules. Yeah, and then <laughs> Like his top bar can help. And that's like the only reason I'd not put him in F tier is because there's someone who's even worse than him. But can't there be two? <laughs> yeah. How many F tiers do we have? Uh, it's just it's just how it's just like is he closer to Han and Horner or no? Nah, I think he can be F tier. It's fine. I'm not gonna fight Rainer in F tier here. All right, fine. Um, Step boy, where do we have him? Uh, the opposite of F tier, or maybe. Well, so Gary is strong. Gary presses presses orb, and assuming you're P two, that's all the little dudes kind of just dead. Yeah, and then just it's the pretty simple. the fat guys. Then you can zerg with them, right? Pretty much. <laughs> Letter. <laughs> Probably yes. Do you agree, Titu? Yeah. All right. Like, even if they transmutate, you're just gonna like stall long enough for Gary to regular shot everything to death, or until the next Egorp comes to wipe off, wipe out the regular enemies, and then finish off the hybrid. All right, there it is. Just make sure, guys. Just make sure to not send in your Zerglings until you're sure that no enemies will will drop right on top of you. Uh, as you're fighting the hybrids, and then that boy does S. Uh, without prestige, still S, right? Still hardened shieldlings. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't think he'd be S without P two. Without P two. He'd be only A without P two, Gary. Okay, that's acceptable. Probably B with P one. <laughs> B with P one. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, Stukov. Like, your whole thing here is Gary is killing everything. Stukov, where do we have him? Stukov, he's also bad. He's mm. super bad. <laughs> um, you're you have two top bars that can't be used except in against when the when when it's only hybrids left, and that's like either things have gone out of control or like in during certain waves. Mm -hmm. And um, tanks, if you don't have enough of them, they run out of ammo, and if you shoot all the ammo at the hardened will. Uh, Harden will 
hybrids, then yeah, the you're not killing the regular units. So I put him in the F. little dudes. He's F? really bad. Yeah, no. he's, F. he's much worse than Rainer. He's like even worse than Rainer. Much At worse? least Rainer can use his top bar. No. At least Rainer can use the Hydra. can go mech. No, that's the problem. No. Hardened Will just says as soon as the first hybrid shows up, your mech is done. It's just over. Mm, that's the problem. You can that... go mech and it goes great until any amount of hybrids show up. I don't think he's worse than Rainer at least. Oh no. No, no he's worse than Rainer. Worse. It's much worse. Were you able to were you not Hardened able to solo will, like, with you might think that mech would make transmutation fine, and it does. As long as there's not a single target with Hardened Will active. <laughs> As soon as Hardened Will shows up, your mech is just completely blown. What I did with what I, what I did to my stupid. Oh, and run. also, also the other problem is that um, so with uh, mech against transmutation, it's kind of important that nothing ever becomes a carrier brood lord. So oh, it's yeah. also kind of at the best of times. <laughs> oh yeah, that's so. true. Yeah, because if something becomes a carrier brood lord, next thing you know, you have that brood lord that annoyingly is sitting there with like seven kills. Oh, fact, also a storm host. After the first you kill, gotta, you no. gotta make the storm host not a thing. Mm, the storm host is not even vaguely as threatening, honestly. Uh, the locusts have high DPS. They'll transmutate right away. <laughs> yes, they'll transmutate right away into like a widow miner zealot. It, it, the thing is that it's the spawn rate of the things. The locusts do not spawn as fast as a broodling chucks brood or broodlord chucks broodlings or a carrier I spits out still... a million interceptors. I would still right click this one was, this one was right away for Burroughs, but yeah. Um, yeah. It, 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 once you have only the fat guys remaining, you can just use infrastructure. Once you have only the fat guys remaining, one... That doesn't happen. Uh, yeah, that, that doesn't happen. One, that doesn't happen. Two, your tanks are probably out of ammo because they kept wasting shots on the hybrid because the hybrid were in front. Um, three, yeah, if there's like the the problem is that you're probably going to find that you're going to be like only the fat guys and that one carrier and if i use infest structure now there's going to be five times as many fat guys <laughs> well like oh. no it can you target the 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 volatile launch the blob yes you can target fire it yeah just regular attack yeah yeah it's still awful yeah I would still rather be Rainer over Stukov. And right. this is we the only that Rainer is missing a solo. The only reason, the only reason I even hesitated at all to put Rainer in F tier is because Stukov is that much worse than Rainer. <laughs> like Stukov is awful. So you're saying? <laughs> all right, never mind. Uh, Stukov F tier. There it is. Uh, T2 sticks where both agree. I, I, I had Stukov in D, but. Both of them said F, so there we go. There we go. No, hardened will is is going to ruin your plans. All right, Swan. Where do we have him? Swan. Um. So this is basically going to come down to uh, is it squishy enough for the laser drill? Basically, uh, if the la it's basically how much work does the laser drill get to do before the enemy actually gets to fight back? Once the enemy starts fighting back, you got to kill him real quick. Um, your turrets are pretty good still, and you can use tanks if it's a ground comp, which get the advantage of incredible range. Um, Enemy, the en en enemies clump up naturally. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I feel like he's going... I, I didn't try Swan, and I should have, because it really comes down to I don't know how much killing the laser drill is capable of relative to the amount that Amon throws at you. I'd say he's probably around B-ish tier, but next I'm going to find that, uh, no, there's way too many enemies or something. So, Tutu, what did you experience? Um, it was much harder than I thought. Um, yeah, I, too many I don't, I'm not sure whether I should have used P1. I used P2. Um, mm. Because I wanted the AOE clearing mm. on hybrid waves. Um, Makes sense. And, um, yeah, I, I put him in B because you make more blaster abilities than usual, and you have um, black factories hovering overhead so that you can get vision to target the units behind the hybrid with, with the, laser. the laser. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's a lot so, of get good. <laughs> yeah, it, I put him in B because some a little comp dependent, 
and also like um you, may, you gotta be on top of your macro to make sure you build enough stuff all right so yep. uh that's a unanimous b one again there it is without one. prestige where does he go same same I, yeah i don't think he's is going to make a dramatic impact all right tychus where do we have him Ty tychus um one grenade kills everything so uh except the, fat the guys. waves get yeah the, the kills everything except the hybrid most pretty much and uh if not you can just like you take you can take so much damage that you can just uh hit the you can like walk past the hybrid or something and hit the hit the guys in the back that you missed um yeah sam is good sam's good uh, Serious turrets also help. You just throw turrets and then walk back. This is Lone Wolf, I guess. Yeah. That's probably the best choice. I put him in S because he's really strong. Do you agree, Spender? Yeah, pretty much. There it is. Without prestige. He he does go to the tier without prestige, right? So a little weaker. weaker? You'll need a healer. Still S? Uh, I would say maybe. he's A. Yeah, I would say he's A. Maybe A. Without, without prestige. All right, there it is. Unanimous S. It's, for... not as bad. it's not as bad as Statman for like, oh, without prestige, you're toast. Or without a certain but... prestige, you're toast. <laughs> yeah, Statman without a certain prestige, you're toast. Tychus, you can make do. All right. Uh, and then Kerax is just, Kerax does not care. He does not care about anything. He will kill everything. He will glass this planet. <laughs> uh, anyways, Vorazun. So... The Vorazun solo I did of this mutation was really, really easy. It's a shame it only works against Ground Terran. <laughs> so kind of like what I did. Kind of like the Rainer solo <laughs> against Ground Protoss, just to see if I could get it with the observers flying around everywhere. No, yeah, it it has to be Ground Terran, and then it's so easy. If it's anything else, you're done. It's over. <laughs> uh, so basically, the biggest problem is like if it's Zerg, uh, there will be overseers. Overseers will give hardened will to hybrid, and you have to figure out how am I gonna kill all the overseers? This will be fun. <laughs> uh, you literally, because you're there, you're causing Amon to send a bunch of overseers by hitting with cloaked units. So you're arguably harming your ally if it's Zerg. <laughs> if it's Terran, it's gonna be so easy. Because you just mass Dark Templar, Amon sends basically no detection. You just press Shadow Fury on every wave, and it's all gone. All of it. Hardened Will does barely anything when you're uh, swiping Hybrid, because it goes down from 15 damage to 10. Oh, no. And you still uh, have yeah. the time stop, which naturally helps your ally. Mm -hmm. And Black Hole, which Black is hole. very... Black hole is very useful against transmutation. For any time anything is starting to get out of hand, you just tell it, nope, stop. Stop doing that. No more transmutating. Stand still. And then you kill it all. Uh, yeah. So basically, uh, Vorazun can be quite useful to her ally with like her tools that she has. Um, if her ally can deal with the detection swarm for her, she should be fine in general. If it's Terran, she should be amazing. But like she's ultra comp dependent yep how shoot up swinging between harming your ally and soloing this with one hand tied behind your back like it's that extreme the comp dependence Jeez. letter uh, i don't know what do you do to someone who's like s against the easiest comp and f against the hardest comps in between uh, c i don't think it's that bad I mean, you're going to have Corsairs. There we go. Corsairs, start with C. I mean, <laughs> Corsairs take how many years to destroy an Overseer? Uh, then you just make like five, six of them. That's what I did. I have like six. Well, not against Zerg, though. I, I, I did against Terra. Zerg, so. I, I, I tried against Zerg. No, Zerg is just, it's awful. It is so, so bad. <laughs> Fighting against Zerg is so mm. bad. Like, the thing is, Shadow Fury doesn't care about the Hardened Will, so it's okay if they waste swipes on the hybrid because they're not actually wasting swipes. But once you get to actually basic attacking the hybrid to get more DPS, yeah, uh, 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it needs a lot of Corsairs to kill those Overseers because... Um, it, oh, Inspiration? Inspiration. How about Stalkers it's instead? Like the, the combination of a, an Overseer sitting over a hybrid, that Overseer is going to take uh, like 100 seconds for a single Corsair to kill. So if you have five Corsairs, it'll take down to 20 seconds. Ooh, 20 seconds of a hybrid just eating you. And you can't do anything about it because there's an Overseer. Her. How about some Stalkers? Yeah. Mm. Snipe the Overseers and run Hopefully away. Hopefully they don't get murdered by the hybrid. Hopefully. That's what you got to hope. It, it It's just, if you're against Zerg, it's going to be extremely painful. That's all there is to it. Letter. Overseers are bad. I don't know. C for extreme cop dependence. <laughs> cop dependence. Corsairs. And it's right between S and F. I don't know how many more justifications you need. <laughs> uh, Tutu, how about you? C seems right. I mean, like, against is. pretty much any Terran, you're just going to walk over them. You have so much time to prepare for anti-detection. But then, yeah. But if it's not Zerg, especially if it's Protoss, you need an Oric. Well, actually, Observer doesn't matter. But you don't want them to see your stuff. All right, how about this? The Observer doesn't give hardened will, so it's much less bad than Overseers. How about but... this? See asterisk. Goes up two tiers if it's Terran. Goes down two tiers if it's not Terran. No, no, it's like C if it's Protoss, E if it's Zerg, and A if it's Terran. Actually, I'd argue it's S if it's like Terran, but like, like it was really so easy. It there was it is. so easy against Terran. C asterisk. There we go. Uh, Zagara, where do I have him? Zagara. Bio launchers, of course. <laughs> use bio launchers. Check it off the list. If you're using P1, like, like you, you, you're gonna run out of gas, and you can kill. You can probably kill all the dudes around the hybrid, but then when it's time to actually fight them and the some of the dudes that have transmutated, it gets a little bit problematic. I would use P3 and just try to rely on Zagara herself until the hybrid waves, anymore. then you like pull back and then let your bio launchers kill them. You basically kite them down the lane, uh, walk back, shoot banelings and stuff, and then when they get close, you your your bio launchers will hit them. You can have like your bio launchers just targeting a spot and you have them walk into that spot. It's like having them walk into some rain, like rain under the the like a balcony or something. Uh I I put it in D. Okay. Uh do you agree, Sticksbender? Yeah. That fits. Alright, the Gara. <laughs> uh Zertul, where do we have him? Um, cannon's good. Are cannons good enough for S tier? Is, uh, do we have an objection? What do you think, Tutu? I don't think they're good enough for S tier. Okay. Well, I would not use only cannons. Yeah, not only cannons, but like, yeah, basically, I think their tool is like he's right between S and A. He's like really good for A. He's really low for S. It's like top of A sounds good. Top of A sounds good. Do you yeah. agree? Do you agree to two? Yeah. All right. Because uh, if you have an air comp, then your Void Templar aren't gonna swing past them. You gotta. Have I to mean, like if you have an air, them. if you have an air comp, you just make uh, immortals. Yeah, instead. forces are pretty good. All right. So uh, there's our tier list for this week. Um, uh, rankings. Who's the best among the S? Carex. It's not close. All right. I'm scared. I'll argue Stedman has less work, but Carax is more effective. Because you cover all the spaces. Yeah, Stedman is less work, but that's always the case because he's really easy. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. You just, you just A-move Zerglings, you press spells on Gary, and you hope your computer doesn't combust. So S is already correctly ordered. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Uh, A. So Zerg is the best, version. right? Yeah. Then Manx. Arcturus? Yeah. I'd say it's correctly ordered now. Now that we put Zeratul in front. What do you think, Tutu? Uh... Isn't the Haka a little easier? I think... I had a little bit of trouble with the Haka oh. against random comp. Oh. Hmm. But maybe because I was building the wrong unit. I don't know. I, I think Mutalists are good. Okay, uh, 
So you think Nova over the Haka? Yes. Mm. I wouldn't complain about that. I, I, I can see okay. why. Nova is defense of drones, which basically shield over charge. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, any objections, Nova over the Haka? No. All right. So for B, who's top B? Alarak? I have no idea. I guess Alarak makes sense, yeah. Yeah, Alarak. Uh, just a uh, 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 psionic orb, and then Mind Blast a hybrid. That makes sense. Yeah. Then, uh, who's next? Abathur. Mm. Abathur, yeah. Vipers are good. Yeah, Vipers are good. Vipers are good. Can't transmit if you can't attack. Alright, for C, uh, Phoenix or Kerrigan? Mm. Phoenix. Is it correctly ordered? Is it correctly ordered already? Because Phoenix, there's like you lose one champ, but you get another one. You're not gonna lose that many. <laughs> you're gonna have even if you lose units, you're still gonna have like you still have full strength. Yeah, pretty well, much. But enemy's gonna be stronger. Do we have wars over Kerrigan because of time stop? I guess Kerrigan also has a mobilization wave, but it doesn't cover the whole map. Kerrigan doesn't lose as soon as it's Zerg, but Kerrigan doesn't auto-win as soon as it's Terran. It's like it, we can't but really Kerrigan, validly pick somewhere for Vorazun. Kerrigan, we could put Vorazun in the middle of C, just like we put her in the middle of the tier list. Kerrigan auto-loses uh, if you lose Kerrigan. That's true. Okay, we could put Vorazun above Kerrigan by reasoning of uh, that puts Vorazun in the middle of C tier, as well as <laughs> in the middle of the tier list. <laughs> Do you agree with that, Titu? Sure. <laughs> All right, D. Who's better, Artie or Zaggy? Oh, here we go again. Do I bring out the coin? No, Artanis is is I feel like very clearly better, but Artanis... shield over charge is really good. Artanis but... has Lark Hunter a. Artanis does better if you use him well. Sagara, so you gotta work hard, but like I think Sagara can be. If you can use bio launchers, Zagara is pretty good. Mm. If you don't, if you can. So what do you think? No. My coin's really shiny. <laughs> <laughs> so who's who's top of D? I, I would put Artanis because I I feel like Zagara people are just gonna like try to run Banelings and then they're all gonna hit hard and will stuff. <laughs> <laughs> all right, R already on top of D. Um, for F, who's worse, Rainer or Stukov? We uh, we've already established this one. Yeah, Stukov is much worse. <laughs> oh Stukov man! Awful. Can you imagine? Can you imagine uh, losing uh, losing with Rainer and Stukov on the mutation? My goodness! Good thing we did it in one try, right, Tutu? Totally first try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. It totally didn't take us two whole days. <laughs> anyway, uh, guys, bad. that's our tier list for this week. Um, watch Tutu and Sticks Banders channels, and we'll link them down below. And uh, one more question for you guys, since uh, I noticed that the tier list gets the most views by far, and my other videos, especially the campaign ones, don't even get that many impressions, meaning they don't, they don't even get recommended. So my question is, how many videos, how many campaign videos did I make do you actually get in your recommended? Uh, post it down below. And I will see you guys next time.